This is truly our Jujutsu Kaisen. Sukuna has defeated like 10 people since Gojo, and yet he is still catching strays. He somehow still hasn't escaped the fraud allegations. What do you think? Are they true? Throughout heaven and earth, is he really the fraudulent one? Well guys, I have no intention of helping this man beat the allegations, but at the very least, we can take an unbiased look at the allegations. Yep, let's get to the root of why Sukuna is being accused of fraudulent behavior in the first place. But first, we have to start with what being a fraud actually means. You see, a fraud is someone who makes claims they can't back up. In Sukuna's case, it's like talking big, but then using roundabout ways to back them up. He is a fraud not because he won, that much was expected, but because of how he won. Now I know what you're thinking. If a fraud means someone who can't back up their claims, then shouldn't Gojo be the ultimate fraud because of his not add win comments? Heck. Even Yuji would be a fraud because despite his vows, he has consistently failed to save people. However, betrayal matters. Gojo personally confessed that the King of Curses was strong. And Yuji probably calls himself a fraud every time he looks in the mirror. But as far as our King of Curses is concerned, his immaturity manifests in his fraudulence. Again, when you look at the allegations, it's not about whether he won, it's about how he won. In simpler terms, you can argue that his trash talking and inabilities to back up his claims, coupled with his dirty tactics and reliance on others' abilities, is what portrays him as the fraudulent one. I'll be real with you guys. The way Gojo vs. Sukuna was portrayed and considering how it has not ended yet in the wake of chapter 261, it is absolutely reasonable to say that Gojo got the better portrayal during this fight. Of course, this doesn't mean Sukuna is weak. It just means that the way he won the fight and the way he has been winning his fights since then doesn't really disprove that Gojo is the strongest. The only thing he had above Gojo was his domain expansion, which as the narrator himself stated, is akin to an artist painting a masterpiece on a canvas, but on air itself. Yes, unlike Sukuna, Gojo's domain expansion wasn't without a barrier. However, even if that was the case, Gojo not only figured out how to counter Sukuna's domain, he was able to equally match and then even win against Malevolent Shrine. Literally, as far as the betrayal is concerned, Sukuna's domain expansion was the only thing supposedly better than Gojo's, and yet, that panel of Gojo's unlimited voice still had more impact than the cuts Gojo received from Sukuna. Ultimately, Sukuna needed both Megumi and Maharaga to get over Gojo's domain. So my question to Sukuna fans is, is this it? Is this your GOAT? Those panels where Sukuna is desperately calling for Maharaga, or the one where he is struggling to stand, or the one where he makes the fight a three on one. All of these don't really help him make his Sukuna look good. Gojo, on the other hand, looked good even when he was getting brutally slashed by Malevolent Shrine. However, let's not forget that it was Sukuna who made Maharaga his Shikigami. Guys, it's all but confirmed that no other user of Ten Shadows has been able to tame Maharaga ever in history. Yes, we know that a previous user of Ten Shadows fought a previous user bearing the Six Eyes, but considering how it was stated that they both killed each other, it is fair to assume that Maharaga was the one who killed both the Six Eyes user and the Ten Shadows user. This point actually proves that Sukuna is the most proficient sorcerer ever. Gojo was able to master the Six Eyes and the Limitless probably better than any other user from his clan, but Sukuna not only mastered Ten Shadows to a similar extent, but he did that despite being an outsider. He basically swooped into Megami's body and took the potential man's potential to its peak. Note that this is different from how Yuta took over Gojo's body and used Unlimited Void in Chapter 261. Unlike Gojo who had already realized his true potential, Megami was still mostly a bum. It was Sukuna who brought out one of the best of the Zenin genes. When you look at it this way, Maruharaga, Agito, and even using Megami's soul are all just indications of Sukuna's absolute grasp over Jujutsu itself. Sukuna was able to use Ten Shadows just as well as Gojo, and could use his Six Eyes even though he had barely had the body for a couple of months at most. It's like this. Is Gojo the strongest because of the Limitless and the Six Eyes? Or... Is he the strongest because he is the one who brought out the full potential of these inherited techniques? If the answer is the former, then that just doesn't make sense because we know that there were others who also inherited both of these techniques, but one of them was a Maharaga victim. 
which means that what makes Gojo strong is the fact that it's him. And that is also what makes Sukuna the strongest. It's because he is him that he is the strongest. He used Ten Shadows so casually because he had made it his own technique. See, it theoretically makes sense why Sukuna was able to win against Gojo. However, what makes more than theory is the paneling and the betrayal of it. So you are telling me that after all that Sukuna was somehow able to win off screen? This is the kind of thing that forces a character into the fraud zone. Take Blackbeard from One Piece, for example. He is a menace, but whether it was his fight with Ace or with Marco or with Law, he won all of them off screen. Now, Oda could be hiding Blackbeard's awakened special move, but by not showing the moment where he lands the final blow, but that is not the case with Sukuna, is it? In the same chapter, we also told exactly how and why Sukuna was able to win. Of course, it doesn't help when we also have other moments like how Sukuna handled Hana. It's like, look, my acting skills which I haven't used since Heian era. It's funny as hell, but you won't catch Gojo lacking like that. And in simpler words, this is the entire discourse. When Sukuna is cornered, he needs tricks. He needs Megumi's technique. He needs Megumi's soul. He also needs to pretend to be Megumi. Not everyone can look at that behavior and call him the strongest. It'll leave a bad taste in their mouth. Another thing I'd add is that for someone who is such a master, Sukuna can be rather petty when you think about it. He was able to commend Jogo for doing so well, but he still not stopped talking trash about our boy Yuji. If anything, Sukuna is busted with the exact kind of plot armor that people usually accuse main shonen characters of. This is also why anyone who has fought Sukuna ends up looking so badass. Aside from Kashimo, of course. He doesn't count. He is also never beating the allegations. As for the whole squad, Hiragurama, Yuji, Yuta, Maki, Takumo, Choso, Kusakabe, Miguel, Toto, and anyone else I miss. You got to have genuine respect for all these studs, because even though they're up against the number one hacks god, and binding thou cheat code abuser. To be fair, Sukuna does give everyone their due thumbs up, unless you're his nephew. It's going to be very interesting to see how Sukuna handles Yuta and Gojo's body, awaken Yuji, and Toto all at once. Gigi has given Sukuna another shot at escaping the allegations. If he kills Gojo's body again, he would laugh in the face of anyone who has ever called him a fraud. This brings us to the next point, and this is among the primary themes of Jujutsu Kaisen. Jujutsu Kaisen has a morally great verse where you end up forsaking a lot of things, and one of those things is your humanity. You see, for Sukuna to become this strong, he gave up on his humanity to the point where people started referring to him as the king of curses. He became more of a curse than a human, a selfish entity who puts his own pleasure and displeasure above all things. An individual who continuously laughs in Yuji's face because Yuji's selfless ideology is the very antithesis of his existence. Sukuna is Sukuna because he doesn't let anything hold him back. He is selfish and it's that selfishness that allows him to casually resort to using underhanded tactics. For what it's worth, Gojo could have also become like Sukuna, but he didn't. Even if only a handful of people ever understood him, Gojo still cared for his friends and especially for his students. He is selfish, but he is also just as mature. Otherwise, he would never raise the next generation like he did, right? Sure, being invincible gave him a flash personality, and let's not ignore the fact that Gojo is still a good person. But hey, what do you know? We now have chapter 261. Notice Sukuna's reaction when he realizes it's actually Yuta and Gojo's body. He apologizes to Yuta and basically says that he wasn't really familiar with Yuta's game. And as for his exact words, Sukuna states that he didn't think Yuta was capable of going this far. Naturally, we know Yuta's reasoning too, and I have nothing but respect for the way Yuta went about things. But if we consider things from Sukuna's perspective, Yuta's actions were similar to the type of thing he himself pulls off, right? Just look at the stupid look on Sukuna's face when he gets impressed by Yuta. Though I still wonder why he didn't have a similar reaction to Yuji. Yuji ate those six cursed womb death paintings who are basically his brothers. Well, I guess Sukuna just can't get over his bias either. Or what if it's because Sukuna still had a bad taste in his mouth from the way he won against Gojo? If I was a fraud Kuna hater, I said Sukuna is actually self-conscious of his winning against Gojo. But I'm just an observer, so I say that Gegi Sensei was intentional when he had Sukuna winning against Gojo in roundabout ways. Get it? Sukuna himself may be conscious of this idea that his win over Gojo was pretty much underserved. It's funny because this entire fight, it was him who was constantly getting outdone by Gojo, yet it was also him who was constantly looking down on Gojo. But things are different now. He is using his real body, and for what it's worth, he is also once again able to use his domain expansion. Honestly, he still might win because it's ultimately up to Yuji and Megami to land the final blow, considering they are the main characters. 
but it is Jujutsu Kaisen, so I guess we'll have to wait and see. So, what do you guys think? Has your opinion of Sugura changed after the way he has been hacked up? Or do you disagree with the fraud allegations? Come on guys, let's continue with this conversation in the comment section down below. And if you guys are enjoying the content, please like, comment, and subscribe, and share and talk with your friends. Personally, there's definitely some truth to the allegations. But we have to also keep in mind that if it wasn't for Sukuna's unparalleled knowledge of Jujutsu, he wouldn't have been able to use Ten Shadows the way he did. Now, don't forget to like again, to comment, and subscribe. It's always appreciated. We're almost at a thousand subscribers, so let's see if we can get there soon. Well then, with that being said, my name is TK, loving us some anime. I'll see you on the next video. Bankai. Senbon Zakura. Kageyoshi.